Queen Margrethe II, King Frederick X, and Queen Mary of Denmark. During her annual New Year's Eve speech in 2023, Queen Margrethe II of Denmark announced that she would retire. The 83-year-old sovereign recently underwent back surgery and has experienced a decline in her health. On January 14, 2024, the 52nd anniversary of her father's death and her own accession, Margrethe will abdicate in favor of her son, now King Frederick X. His Australian wife, Mary, will become queen consort, and their son, Christian, will become crown prince and heir apparent. Let's take a look at the fascinating and artistic life of Denmark's second longest reigning monarch and her late husband, Prince Heinrich. Then we'll meet the popular and stylish new king and queen. Plus, I'll let you know what pomp and ceremony to expect as Margrethe says farewell to her role as monarch and Frederick X ascends the throne of Denmark. Queen Margrethe II was born April 16, 1940, one week after Nazi Germany invaded Denmark. The princess's early childhood was much as it would have been were the world not at war. Germany allowed the Danish government and monarchy to operate relatively normally, but Margrethe's grandfather, King Christian X, took daily rides through the streets of Copenhagen to inspire his people towards resistance. Margrethe's parents, Crown Prince Frederick and Princess Ingrid, daughter of the King of Sweden, raised her at Amalienborg Castle, and she was educated by a governess. The princess was baptized Margrethe, the Danish version of her maternal grandmother, Princess Margaret of Connaught's name. She was a granddaughter of Queen Victoria, who fell in love with the heir to the Swedish throne. She died of pregnancy complications at the age of 38, when her daughter was just 10. Princess Ingrid remembered her mother, who was nicknamed Daisy with great fondness. Upon Ingrid's marriage, her father presented her with a brooch made from her mother's diamonds in the shape of a daisy. Her own daughter, Margrethe, was also called Daisy within the family. It was only a coincidence that Margrethe was also the name of Denmark's only previous female monarch, who also managed to take over Norway and Sweden in the 1300s. Little Margrethe was not destined to become queen, because at that time, the succession was agnatic and barred women from inheriting the throne. It was expected that she would have a younger brother who would become king instead. But as two sisters, Benedict and Anne-Marie, joined the family, the succession became contentious. According to the law, the next in line after Frederick was his brother, Prince Knut. He was famously dim-witted, and Danes were not eager to see him on the throne. In 1947, Margrethe's grandfather died, and her father became King Frederick IX. That year, he began the complicated process of changing the law from agnatic to male preference primogeniture to allow his daughter to inherit the throne. The people voted in a referendum and made it clear that they wanted a queen. The new Succession Act was passed in 1953, and Margrethe became heir presumptive. The same year, 26-year-old Elizabeth II was crowned Queen of the United Kingdom. 13-year-old Princess Margrethe recalls hoping that she would not be so young when her own father died, and she was required to dedicate her life to her people. She accompanied her parents on visits to the Faroe Islands and Greenland, which are both self-governing territories of the Kingdom of Denmark. At 16, she attended the traditional New Year's Court for the first time. At 18, she took an oath to obey the Constitution, and her formal training as future head of state began. She was given a seat on the Council of State and allowed to chair meetings in her father's absence. She graduated from a private school in Copenhagen, then spent a year at boarding school in England. In 1960, the princess joined her cousins, Princess Margrethe of Sweden and Princess Astrid of Norway, on a tour of the United States. While visiting Paramount Studios in Los Angeles, they met Dean Martin, Jerry Lewis, and Elvis Presley. 
Margrethe was highly intelligent and dove into education. She studied philosophy at Copenhagen University and prehistoric archaeology at Cambridge. She joined her grandfather, King Gustav VI Adolf of Sweden, on an excavation in Italy and also worked on sites in Egypt, South America, and Denmark. Next, she took courses on political science at Arras University, the Sorbonne in Paris, and at the London School of Economics. The future queen was fluent in English, French, and German, in addition to her native Danish and her mother's tongue, Swedish. Throughout her university years, the princess regularly returned home to perform voluntary service in the Danish Women's Air Force, achieving the rank of lieutenant. But she was also eager to return to London to see her boyfriend. Prince Heinrich of Denmark was born Henri Marie Jean André du Lambourg du Montpizat in Talence, France, on June 11, 1934. He and his older sister were the result of an adulterous relationship. His mother, Renee, left her husband and moved to French Indochina, now Vietnam, with her lover, André, Count de Montpizat. Upon the outbreak of World War II, the family returned to France, where René was able to divorce her husband and marry André. The couple had seven more children. Henri returned to Hanoi as a teenager and fought the Viet Minh to protect his family's land. He wanted to study piano, but instead he obeyed his father's wishes and studied law and political science at the Sorbonne and in Hong Kong and Saigon. He fought for the French in the Algerian War, then joined the foreign ministry. While assigned to the embassy in London, he met Princess Margrethe, who was studying at the London School of Economics. They dated for several years before Henri proposed with a toi et moi style double diamond engagement ring. In previous generations, Henri's birth as an illegitimate son of a minor noble would have barred him from marrying a future queen, but times had changed. The Danish people accepted Henri, and Parliament approved the engagement in one day. King Frederick and Queen Ingrid threw a series of pre-wedding dinners, balls, and galas for their daughter and future son-in-law, who converted to Lutheranism, Danicized his name to Heinrich, and was inducted into the chivalric order of the elephant. He already spoke English, German, Chinese, and Vietnamese, and he picked up Danish quickly, but with a strong accent. Margrethe and Heinrich wed on June 10, 1967, at Holman Church in Copenhagen. The princess wore a silk gown with a 20-foot train. Her Irish lace veil had been worn by her maternal grandmother and namesake, Princess Margaret, in 1905, and by her mother in 1935. The bride donned the diamond Cartier tiara her grandmother had received as a wedding gift from the Khedive of Egypt, and her mother's diamond daisy brooch. The newlyweds were toasted at a lavish reception at Fredensborg Palace. Unfortunately, her youngest sister, Anne-Marie, and her husband, King Constantine II of Greece, were at that moment embroiled in a coup d'etat, which would shortly bring the Greek monarchy to an end and see them exiled. Margrethe displayed their pictures at the reception. Eleven months later, she gave birth to a son, Frederick. A second son, Joachim, followed the next year. The young family had a quiet life, but their tranquility lasted only four years. King Frederick IX was hale and hearty when he delivered the traditional New Year's Eve speech in 1971. On January 3rd, he suffered a cardiac arrest and was rushed to Copenhagen Municipal Hospital, where he died on the 14th, surrounded by his family. The following day, Prime Minister Jens Otto Krau pronounced Margrethe queen from the balcony of Christiansborg Palace. She was joined by her husband and sons who waved to the crowds. Choosing the regional name Margrethe II was an act of feminism. Margrethe I had not previously been accepted as a queen regnant because she was never crowned. By recognizing her predecessor as a fully-fledged queen, her place in history was cemented. Margrethe became the third reigning queen in Europe, joining Elizabeth II of the UK and Juliana of the Netherlands. The 31-year-old queen was devastated by the death of her beloved father and by being thrust onto the throne. 
However, she took to the role with a natural talent and eloquence. She built on the popularity of her grandfather and father and modernized the monarchy. Though she is head of state and the government is formed in her name, the queen exists as a unifying force. She refrains from exercising her right to vote so as to remain politically neutral. She has an intricate knowledge of all parts of the Danish realm and even contributed to a book about Danish history. Her relaxed manner and savvy endeared her to many foreign leaders. The queen is also widely admired for her personal artistic pursuits. Her paintings have been displayed in renowned galleries, and she illustrated the Danish edition of the Lord of the Rings novels. She has also designed costumes for the Royal Danish Ballet and creates many of her own outfits, which are famously colorful and eccentric. Prince Heinrich also pursued a variety of interests. He amassed an impressive collection of wood and jade figures, made wine at his French vineyard, played piano, and published poems and cookbooks. He planned family meals with the royal chef, inspired by his childhood in France and Asia. There was no precedence for a male consort in Denmark, so Heinrich created his own role as supporter and counselor to the queen. As their sons grew, Heinrich became frustrated that he didn't have a higher title than them. In 2002, Crown Prince Frederick was tapped to host a New Year's reception instead of his father. Furious, Heinrich dramatically departed for France and complained publicly of being relegated to third place. Margrethe made peace by granting her husband the title of Prince Consort and giving his hereditary title of Count of Montpizat to their two sons and eight grandchildren. Still, Heinrich complained that he should be named King Consort. Many Danes saw this as arrogant. Heinrich took the argument literally to his grave. In 2017, he announced that he would not be buried next to his wife in the royal vault. Later that year, he was diagnosed with dementia. On February 14, 2018, Prince Heinrich died peacefully in his sleep, with his wife and sons by his side. Per his wishes, he was not given a royal funeral, but was cremated and his family held a small service. Following the death of her husband, Margrethe's own health declined. She had been a chain smoker for years and had been treated for cervical cancer and spinal stenosis. January 2022 marked her 50-year Golden Jubilee, and numerous celebrations were planned, but postponed because of the ongoing COVID-19 pandemic. In September, just as the festivities were about to begin, Elizabeth II died. The Danish celebrations were significantly reduced. Elizabeth's death made Margrethe Europe's longest reigning monarch and the world's only queen regnant. That year, Margrethe announced that she would be removing the titles of prince and princess from the children of her younger son, Prince Joachim. This was in line with other monarchies and done to reduce the public cost of the royal family and allow the children to pursue a life outside of royalty. However, the queen did not properly prepare her grandchildren for the change. Joachim's ex and current wives spoke publicly against the queen's decision. In February 2023, the queen underwent spinal surgery. She recovered well, but her declining health led her to consider leaving the responsibility to the next generation. During her annual New Year's Eve speech, the queen appeared on national television with her mother's diamond daisy brooch pinned to her purple top. She has worn this sentimental jewel on many significant occasions. The queen made the surprising announcement that she would abdicate. Danes and royal watchers were caught off guard, as no previous Danish monarch has voluntarily abdicated in this way. Many expected Margrethe to remain on the throne until her death, as Queen Elizabeth II had done. She has even made public statements confirming her intention to do so. However, in recent years, several other monarchs have made the decision to retire and pass the throne to their children. To learn more, check out my video on living former monarchs who retired. Danes are hailing the Queen's decision as a wise choice for the modern monarchy. 
This will allow her son time to settle in to the role with his mother's guidance, while he himself is still relatively young. It's a brand new year, and if travel is on your list for 2024, and you're free May 15th to 21st, then join me on my historic tour of Scotland. Over seven days, we'll experience the highlights of Scottish history, from lowlands to highlands. We'll see the honors of Scotland at Edinburgh Castle, Bronze Age burial chambers at Balnurin of Clava, Elendonan Castle, the Living History Highlands Folk Museum, Dunkeld Cathedral, the mystical Isle of Skye, and so much more. We'll try delicious Scotch delicacies and unwind over a whiskey tasting. And most amazingly of all, we'll do it all with a group of fellow history lovers and a local guide. There are only a few spots left, so click the link in the description to reserve yours today. Use promo code HOLIDAY50 to get $50 off your trip. That will buy a lot of haggis, or shortbread cookies if you prefer. I can't wait to meet you in Scotland. King Frederick X was born by emergency caesarean section at Copenhagen University Hospital on May 26, 1968. His name follows a tradition dating back to the 1500s, whereby all Danish monarchs have had alternating names, Frederick and Christian. Margrethe decided to take the place of a Christian and name her son in honor of her father. When he was four, his mother became queen, and he became crown prince and heir apparent. He attended school in Denmark and boarding school in France. He is fluent in Danish, French, English, and German. He studied political science at Aarhus University and spent a year incognito under the name Fred Heinrichsen at Harvard University. Frederick did extensive service in the military. He trained as an elite frogman scuba diver. During a mission, his wetsuit filled with water, and he had to waddle around like a penguin, earning him the nickname Pingo. The prince was awarded the rank of Major General in the Army and Air Force, and Rear Admiral in the Navy. He worked for three months at the Danish mission to the UN in New York, then returned to Denmark to complete a master's degree in political science. He was first secretary to the Danish embassy in Paris for a year. By 2000, the 32-year-old prince had a reputation as a partying playboy, and there was wide speculation about when he might make some lucky lady a princess. To escape the inquiries, the royal bachelor went on a four-month dog-sledding expedition to northern Greenland. When he returned, he joined a bunch of royal cousins at the Sydney Olympics. Queen Mary of Denmark was born Mary Elizabeth Donaldson on February 5, 1972, in Hobart, Australia. Her parents were recent immigrants from Scotland. Her mother was an executive assistant to the vice chancellor of the University of Tasmania, and her father was a mathematics professor. Mary is the youngest of four siblings. In school, Mary played basketball and hockey, as well as piano, flute, and clarinet. She studied commerce at the University of Tasmania and completed a law degree. Next, she moved to Melbourne and launched her career in advertising. In 1997, Mary's mother died from complications of heart surgery. Following the traumatic event, Mary quit her job and spent several months traveling America and Europe. She then moved to Sydney and took a position as an account director. In 2000, the world came to Sydney for the Summer Olympics. Mary went out with friends to a pub called the Slip Inn. There, her flatmate saw a man she knew at the bar and introduced Mary to him and his companions. Mary hit it off with one man in the crowd, Fred. She didn't find out until later that her new boyfriend was the Crown Prince of Denmark. The man her flatmate knew was Felipe, the future king of Spain, and they had also been drinking with Prince Nicolas of Greece and Princess Martha Louise of Norway. Mary and Frederick began a long-distance relationship. He made several discreet trips to Australia to see her. In 2001, the papers identified Mary as the prince's girlfriend. She then moved to Copenhagen, took a job as a project consultant for Microsoft, and began taking Danish lessons. Frederick proposed with a ring featuring square-cut diamonds and rubies, similar to the Danish flag. 
In 2003, their engagement was officially announced, and the media in Europe and Australia went wild over their Cinderella story. They wed on May 14, 2004, in Copenhagen Cathedral. Mary wore a gown designed by Ufa Frank. Her something old was Princess Margaret's lace veil from 1905. Her something new was a diamond and pearl fleur-de-lis tiara given to her by her new in-laws. The couple spent their honeymoon in Africa. Upon their return, the Crown Prince couple jumped right in to a working tour of Denmark aboard the royal yacht Daneborg, then voyaged to Greenland and finally to the Athens Olympics. They welcomed four children, Christian, Isabella, and twins Vincent and Josephine. Both are involved in numerous charities. Frederick has special interest in scientific research, climate change, and sustainability. He has written papers and a book on the issues. He is an avid sportsman and has completed several marathons and Ironmans. He participated in Sweden's Vasa Lopet cross-country skiing race with Prince Håkon of Norway. In 2009, Prince Frederick was elected to the International Olympic Committee. In honor of his 50th birthday, he launched the Royal Run to encourage Danes to exercise. The event was a success and has now become annual. Mary focuses on immigrants, refugees, and women's health. She is one of the few royals in the world who is an outspoken ally to the LGBTQ community. Mary has been named one of the world's most fashionable people by Vanity Fair. She has posed for Vogue and other magazines and used the opportunity to promote the Danish fashion industry. In her spare time, Mary competes in dressage. In 2018, at a gala celebrating Crown Prince Frederick's 50th birthday, Mary gave a speech in impeccable Danish telling her husband, I'm so happy that you swept me off my feet. Numerous celebrations were planned for Mary's 50th birthday in February 2020, but most were canceled in the wake of COVID-19. Still, a large crowd appeared to wish the princess a happy birthday. In late 2023, the press had a field day printing speculations that Prince Frederick was having an affair. Rather chaste photographs of him enjoying an evening out in Madrid with Mexican socialite Genevieve Casanova surfaced. Some have suggested that the Queen's abdication was timed to shore up the marriage between Frederick and Mary, who is now considered the monarchy's greatest asset. The couple have declined to comment on the rumors and appeared happily together during the Christmas season. Their eldest child will become Crown Prince Christian. He was born on October 15, 2005, and hailed with a 21-gun salute and bonfires across Denmark and Australia. At three, the prince joined his grandfather in opening the Elephant House at the Copenhagen Zoo. That year, the succession law was changed again to absolute primogeniture, meaning female royals have the same succession rights as males. Christian was the first Danish royal to attend nursery school and public primary school. At nine, he accompanied his parents on a tour of Greenland, and when he was 13, the family visited the Faroe Islands. He began his secondary education in 2021 at Herlufsholm, an elite boarding school. A documentary exposed allegations of bullying, violence, and sexual abuse at the school. Christian's parents announced that he would withdraw and none of his siblings would attend. Instead, the prince enrolled at the local public gymnasium, the Danish version of a high school. In October 2023, Christian turned 18 and his grandmother threw him a glamorous birthday gala. The banquet featured royals from across Europe in gowns, tiaras, tuxedos, and dress uniforms. Christian was photographed with four future queens. But the white tie event was far from stuffy. Queen Margrethe wanted to ensure the party was for her grandson's generation. She invited 200 young people from across the Danish Commonwealth who have distinguished themselves in sport, art, and culture. And she hired Denmark's hottest rapper, Benjamin Hav, to surprise them. The modern fairy tale soiree ended with a mysterious single gold Manolo Blahnik stiletto left behind, which was posted on the palace Instagram the next day. 
the real-life Cinderella was identified as 18-year-old Danish student Anna Sophie Olsen, who pulled the stunt because she thought it was funny, but admitted it would be great if Prince Christian called. This is surely only the beginning of the romantic interest in the new heir apparent, who is already being hailed as Europe's most eligible bachelor. In November, Prince Christian attended his first Council of State meeting. There he made a solemn oath to honor the Danish constitution. This was required for him to someday be installed as head of state, and allows him to step in as temporary regent if the monarch is out of the country or incapacitated. This milestone for her grandson, and having two generations ready to take the throne, likely helped Queen Margrethe to make the decision to step down. If all goes to plan, Christian will someday become King Christian XI, though with the precedence his grandmother has now set, he may not have to wait for his father to die. So what kind of ascension festivities will we see in Denmark? If you're expecting the massive parades, gold coaches, and ancient ceremonies we just saw in the United Kingdom, then unfortunately you'll have to pack away your red and white bunting. The Scandinavian monarchies are far more low-key. The last coronation in Denmark was held in 1648 for King Frederick III. After him, new monarchs were merely anointed with holy oil until Christian VIII in 1840. In 1849, Denmark became a constitutional monarchy. From then on, all that was required was for the prime minister to officially announce the accession of a new monarch. Previous accessions have always followed the death of the previous monarch. This meant that the proclamation was only a small glimmer in the otherwise dark season of mourning. The nation for their king, and the new monarch for their parent. In 1972, Queen Margrethe wore black and was understandably grief-stricken as she waved from the balcony. But this time, she's alive and well and will be there to cheer on the new king. So the mood and possibly the event will be a bit different. Celebrations of Margrethe's reign are already all over the world. She is getting a chance to enjoy her laurels while she's still alive and she may inspire other aging monarchs to follow suit. There was speculation about what title she would take. Beatrix of the Netherlands now goes by Princess, and Akihito of Japan is Emperor Emeritus. The palace has announced that she will continue to be styled Her Majesty Queen Margrethe. There is a possibility that the joyful mood may translate to more ceremony surrounding the new king and queen. Frederick certainly won't have the 1595 crown of Christian V placed on his head. It and the other crown jewels are usually only removed from display at Rosenborg Castle to be placed upon a monarch's coffin, but they may make an appearance over the weekend. Many other European monarchies display their crown jewels during accession ceremonies. Some of these rites might inspire the Danes. Sweden and Spain have formal enthronement rituals. Frederick may get a chance to sit in the 1660 coronation chair, but its silver lions, symbolic of absolute monarchy, might not sit well with the democratic Danes. Belgium, the Netherlands, and Luxembourg witnessed their new monarchs formally swearing to uphold the constitution, but Frederick already made a similar oath back in 1986 when he turned 18. King Harald V of Norway had a church blessing in 1991, but Denmark is not an especially religious nation. What we can surely count on seeing January 14th is the proclamation of the new king from the balcony of Christian Borg Palace, and the Danish royal family, likely including Queen Margrethe, waving to the crowd. Plus, there will probably be a glitzy, tiara-studded accession gala. We know the Danes can throw a good one. Many eyes will be on Copenhagen this week to see how the end of Margrethe II's stellar reign and the launch of King Frederick X and Queen Mary's reign will be celebrated. Please turn your eyes back to my channel next Tuesday, where I will be covering what happened, giving historic context, and an overview of the history of Denmark, its monarchy, and its crown jewels.
If you enjoyed this video, please like, subscribe, comment your thoughts, and check out my other royal history videos. If you really want to help, please consider supporting me on Patreon. A link is in the description. Thank you for watching.